36. Inside handoff up the middle. Goplin to the 10. Touchdown. Springs it up the middle on third down. 36 yards. You see the play here. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, gets a little push off there from the defender. Yeah. And look at that. Matt Holson from behind. He's got two of the biggest hits down today. Past season, St. Clair Lutheran won its first ever state football title. Let's take a look in the past to see what the beginning was like for St. Clair Lutheran. Well, the first year we had 15 kids. By the time we got to the end of the season, we had 21. And then once we got things rolling a little bit, the next year we had some 30. And I think at the peak, um, we actually had 57 one year where we had 200, 220 kids and 57 kids off of football. So the kids participated and were enthusiastic about it. It was really kind of a uh, building program. Uh, Pastor Stab had been here for a while, but the school really wasn't very large at that time and started to grow in enrollment. And therefore, participation in football did go up. We didn't have our own football field. We played actually most of our games over here at the old Brady High School. And even a few of them, when they didn't want us to tear up the field when it was wet, we played a couple of games over at Breck, where we actually rented Breck from them. We did win a, a few championships. I remember the first one um, that was really pretty exciting. We were, we had gone one and four in non-conference, and uh, our quarterback had been hurt, so it wasn't too much a surprise since we were mostly a passing but a real highlight of that was we beat the last three games of the year. We beat three top 10 teams to win the conference and then get into the playoffs. Back then they went by conference. If you uh, won the conference, you were in. So our five and five overall record uh, still got us in. We won a couple games in the playoffs, but we didn't make it to state that year, but it was really a treat for, for those guys to win their first championship. 45 left first quarter, split backfield with Matt Olson. Under center, they'll hit it left side and a big, big hole for Wesley Tucker. 40, 30, he could go the distance. He will. Touchdown Crusaders. And that's their answer. Yeah, one of my most uh, memorable moments as a player uh, was certainly the last game of my senior year. Uh, we were playing a good team back then. Breck was a big competitor of St. Croix. And uh, we had a great game, and it came right down to the wire and some big hits um, were delivered and, and it was a lot of fun to uh, play both ways just like our guys are now on offense and defense. So, so that was probably my, my biggest memory that I had when I was playing. Um, this last year, it was definitely the halftime of the uh, PEM game. And uh, during the halftime of the PEM game, I thought uh, uh, several of our guys were gonna cry and um, I didn't think, I, I don't think anyone thought they were gonna come out and have the second half that they had uh, that game. And so um, you just saw a lot of growth with our uh, athletes uh, during that game and especially um, at that time. Back to wide receivers for St. Croix Lutheran here on first down and long. Will inside reverse handoff near side. Is that Zachary Teets? Near side, 50, to the 40, to the 30, still going to the 20, cuts, stumbles down to the 10. Nifty inside handoff. Uh, the highlights of coaching at St. Croix. Uh, every, every year, every day is a highlight um, because of all the different things that happen. So I, I guess I can't nail down one thing as to say uh, practices are a highlight, games are a highlight, uh, banquets are a highlight. Everything's a highlight, so weight training, um, so uh, I, I really can't distinguish besides saying everything's a highlight. And he's just been there every single play. Fourth down, Olsen, handoff, Teets, far side, open, oh, it's a fake, inside the line, open, it's Goplin, touchdown, what a fake, they fake the inside. probably is the school that is uh, uh, the one that wins the conference the most and has the most athletes, which is uh, 
know, on the west side of Minneapolis, or in Minneapolis. The future of St. Croix football hinges on the athletes, how committed they are to working in the off season and preparing themselves and dedicating themselves to doing well in the game of football. After going 14-0 this past season, it shows how far St. Croix Lutheran football has come since it started in 1969, and the future of the program looks very bright. The ball's in his arms. Costly turnover, just the exchange between uh, Nick Garago and Ben Kine. Tell me what it means to you, uh, to the community, to be able to come up with this. It's huge. Oh, I'm so happy right now. It's great for our school and just we represented our Lord out there nice today too. How tired were you guys playing both ways? Most of you guys play both ways. It looked like at the end of the game that the fatigue was catching up a little bit. Yeah, I got a little tired, but I was just running on adrenaline the whole time out there. Thankfully, we didn't have anybody cramp up like we usually do though. Hey, and lastly, when you saw that hole in the last one of the game to put you guys ahead, what were the feelings like? I was just thinking I got to hang on the ball. <laughs> and then we got to make a stop on D2. Congratulations. Go celebrate with the team. I talked to your coach. All right, thanks. All right, that's All right coach. Uh, 17 years been at this school. It's been a long time. A couple trips to the state tournament. You never walked away a champion. What is this moment like for you? Well, it's probably one of the most special of my career. Uh, winning 3A in Minnesota, you know, where it's six steps to get there. I mean, it's, I don't think there's a greater uh, uh, feeling that I have as a coach after a victory like this.